Meine Damen und Herren, Reginald Barris. Bitte. Hi everybody. Hi, my name is Reginald Barris. I'm an American comedian. I live here in Vienna and I do this full time because I make fantastic life choices. Yeah. That's the American dream. They're like, when you grow up, you can do anything. I was like, cool, let's put that to the test. I'm gonna become a full time English speaking comedian in a German speaking country that hasn't laughed since the 40s. <laughs> and somehow it worked. <laughs> and they gave me an artist visa so I could stay here telling jokes in the wrong language, which no one ever appreciates that. <laughs> uh, but if, if you've been to an immigration office, you know it's not fun, okay? An Austrian immigration office, the entire process is a dude named Stefan smoking a cigarette <laughs> while he angrily stamps all your paperwork. Just, uh oh, you want to live your dreams? What about Stefan's dreams? <laughs> I was going to be in the opera, but no, little boys cannot be sopranos. Fuck you, papa. <laughs> it's crazy. He was doing everything he could to keep me from getting that visa. So finally, six months, finally, reluctantly, he had to hand it over. And I've never been so proud of anything in my entire life. Because that Austrian artist visa, that means that Austria officially accepts me as an artist. So take that, Hitler. Weird time for Austrians to applaud. I say, Hitler, you guys clap, <laughs> because Austria's learned nothing. Okay. <laughs> uh, I tour a lot, I tour a lot. Uh, I just did like 60 cities last year, and I had a lot of weird experiences. I had one show in the middle of it. For no reason, this woman yells out, oh, that reminds me. Then she took a birth control pill, popped it like a Tic Tac, <laughs> washed it down with beer, all without breaking eye contact. <laughs> And I hadn't been telling a joke about sex at the time. <laughs> Just 20 minutes of hearing me talk reminded her why she never wants children. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, I told that story in Amsterdam. A girl in the front row went, ah, oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, to change the subject. <laughs> I'm half black. I don't know if you can tell if that's obvious to you, but my dad's black. And he's black, black, which I don't know what that means, but Austrians love to ask. <laughs> like, is he black, black? <laughs> he's black. Like Kanye, black. <laughs> like Nigerian drug dealer at Taliestrasse, black. <laughs> People get so confused. They're like, how are you so pale if your dad's black? I'm like, I don't know. If you think it's confusing, imagine how I felt. <laughs> Five years old, same question. It's just me, my white mom, and my black dad. I'm just giving my dad the side eye like, Mom, what's wrong with dad? <laughs> my mom didn't even miss a beat. She was like, oh, when your father was a child, he never listened to his mother. <laughs> That's why you should always eat your vegetables. I'm too pale, like honestly, it's, I, I wish I were darker. It'd make things a lot easier. Like, not too dark, because then things would get harder again, but just, <laughs> like, a happy... I'm like, right now, I'm, I'm black enough for an afro, but still white enough to get scammed by taxi drivers. <laughs> and that is not the white privilege I was promised. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Like, honestly, I, I have so many things, because I'm so racially ambiguous. My biggest fear is going to prison, just because... It's not even the cops that bother me. It's like, like I don't know which gang to join if I need help. <laughs> I'll get in a fight, I'll be like, what's up, my brothers? I do have blue eyes, sorry about that. <laughs> Brothers? Ooh, swastika on the forehead. Okay. <laughs> About a month ago, I told that story in Prague. After the show, this guy comes up to me. He's like, dude, that was my favorite joke of the whole night. Because I'm half Mexican, and I've had that thought before. Like, if I get arrested and have to go to prison, which gang do I join? The white gang or the Mexican gang? I was like, dude, you are a Mexican in the Czech Republic. If you go to prison, you are the Mexican gang. <laughs> so I've lived here like six years so far, and I, I think I finally understand what Europe's all about, okay? It took me a while, but you're all the same. Every country just brags about how much it can drink while accusing everyone else of being alcoholics. <laughs> no one has a problem. You ask the French, it's the British, ask the British, it's the Irish, ask the Irish, it's the Russians, ask the Russians, Russians. <laughs> That's the other thing I've learned, is the drinking pride and the strongest drink gets stronger depending on how poor the economy is. <laughs> Think about it. Germany, strong economy, chilling with beer. France has champagne. 
Russia has vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Keep scrolling down that list of Bulgaria. They hand you a bottle of rakia, home brewed in a toilet bowl. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 90% alcohol. It tastes like you threw Stalin in a juicer. <laughs> and if you don't like it, don't tell them. They do not accept that. I, I made the mistake, I tried it, I was like, mm, that is disgusting. Dude just laughed at me. <laughs> oh, you drink because taste? <laughs> we drink for to forget the world is sad. <laughs> Bottle a day keeps the doctor away. Also, we have no doctors. <laughs> All right, my name is Reginald Barris, thank you very much. <laughs> oh,